Hi, everyone. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Hi, teacher. Hi, how are you? Hi, thank you. Good. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. How is everybody else? How are, how are you? Hi, teacher. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you. And everybody else is okay? Yeah? Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Um, how is everyone, uh, how is everyone's day today? Pretty good? You had a good day? Yeah? Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, well, guys, um, I'm happy that uh, the majority of you are here today. Um, so um, I just wanted to, before we begin, I wanted to ask you, uh, have you all been able to go into the platform? <coughs> Has anybody had problems with the platform? Yeah, I finished that. Uh, first stage or first homework, I can finish it. Sorry, Juan, could you repeat that? Uh, yes, I can uh, enter the platform and I can finish the first stage and also I don't know of first homework. Okay, I, I understand. Yesterday, yesterday. Yeah, I understand. Um, that's actually something I wanted to tell you guys. I wanted to mention that, um, that uh, in case anybody was having problems with um, it, with the um, there is there there has been a, a small inconvenience there with the platform. Uh, there is a technical problem. This is actually a. a it's an like an international problem with the with the platform. So um, if you haven't been able to uh, to work on the platform, it's okay. You're not the only one. To, uh, currently, uh, we are working on that problem so that uh, everybody can can use the platform. Okay. So no worries if you have if you've been having problems or you've done parts of it but you haven't done everything. It's okay. Um, we are going to help you uh, as, as fast as we can. We're going to try to make it uh, start running, okay? Okay. All right. What about the others? Uh, anybody that did have the opportunity of going on the platform? Uh, I know, but I downloaded the app on, on my smartphone. Okay. But but uh, the app mm, don't uh, refresh the problems. Don't I I can watch in the problems uh, in the platform when when I enter the, in the platform on PC and uh, yeah uh, how do you say say uh, to be a, to do a follow up. Ah, okay okay. I I watched the progress, the percentage, and and PC, the, the platform and PC in my computer, but in my smartphone I can watch the progress. I I, I don't know. I have a fail failure, or uh, the app can charge the progress. It's it's good or. I don't have any, uh, I don't know. Okay. It, it, I need to, uh, no, no sé, por la expresión, pero no tengo que por, por qué preocuparme. You don't have to worry. Ajá, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, um, what I was mentioning, it might be because of that, that uh, we've been having some problems uh, since yesterday there with the with the platform 
So it's a possibility that, um, that it could be because of that. But if the platform starts running, it starts working, and we are still having problems with it, it then, um, then, it, then you will be able to, we'll, we'll be able to help you, okay? So right now, don't worry about it. It might be because of the technical problem that we've been having, but if it gets solved and you're still having problems, then we're going to help you. Okay, so no worries. Okay. 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 Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about the others? Everybody is is um like have you has anybody had the opportunity of working the platform and didn't have any problems? Good evening, teacher. Hi. Good evening, Herdo. Uh, yeah, I have a problem with the platform. Uh, with the session uh, 1.7 with it's according to the way it's according to the possibility with advice 1.7 or 1.9 because mm -hmm. 1.7 is just the part where it says the lesson yeah, it's 1.9 uh -huh. I, I don't remember yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. That's what. That's actually what I'm, what I'm going to be showing you um, today. So uh, we haven't really touched that um, the topic yet. We'll be touching it today. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So you you can relax. You know you will we'll, uh, we'll be working on that today so that it, we can answer your question. Okay. 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 Perfect. No problem. Thank you. Good. You're welcome. Okay. What about the rest of you? Any questions that you have? No teacher, in my case, I entered the, the, the password in the yeah. platform, but I don't have time to to work in that. Okay. Okay, no worries. Um, if you're gonna have a chance, it's okay. We, you will get a chance um, during this week, okay? I just wanna make sure that okay. everybody has been able to uh, get into the platform. And if you haven't, don't worry, because uh, we will, we will uh, work on it later. Like we're gonna, we're working on it uh, on the technical difficulties right now, so that you guys can work on the platform very soon. Okay, so don't worry, don't worry about that. Uh, what about the um, the video on the YouTube playlist? Were you guys able to see it? Yes, no? Yes, I can watch the playlist on YouTube. Yeah, Okay. Can. Good, 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 excellent. All right, because I, I uploaded the video yesterday um, so that everybody could see it. So you have a chance um, to, to look at it. And speaking of um, what we did yesterday, today we're gonna be doing a little continuation. I'm actually gonna give you a little bit more. Um, I mean, yesterday we just kind of like touched upon the topics um, so that you would have an uh, opportunity to look at the information and start working in the platform. Obviously, I didn't know that there was some problem, there was gonna be some te technical difficulties with the platform. But um, today we're gonna be having more chance to, um, to work on that, right? To, to do more exercises on that, okay? So uh, today I'm going to be, um, well, I'm going to, go ahead and explain a little bit better the um the pass the 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 passive voice so let me know when you can see my powerpoint presentation You see it? Or not yeah, yet? Teacher. Yeah, teacher. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so um, I know that I, I went over this, this slide yesterday, but I'm going, but because I did it very quickly yesterday, I'm going to explain a little bit 
more today. Okay? So there are many reasons why we use the passive. The first reason is when the doer is unknown. Okay? That means that uh, we don't know who did the action. The person that did the action is Basically, yeah, it's 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 a mystery, let's say, okay? We simply don't know it. And I explained, for example, this this um, exercise or this uh, sentence that we have here, the building was constructed in 1951. 1951 was like almost 70 years ago. So it's very difficult to find out who constructed the building. And even if we construct, we even though we knew that who constructed the building, they probably wouldn't be alive. So it really doesn't, it's not something that we would know. Okay, without information, we really, really, we really wouldn't know. Okay. Um, so in this case, since we don't know who did the action, we can start saying, um, you know, like they can say, they say in Spanish, Fulanito constructed the building. Well, we can't say that because we don't know who did it. You know, it could have been somebody named I don't know, John, or it could have been something named, somebody named Samuel or somebody named uh, Maria, uh, for all we know. But we, since we don't know their names, we simply don't mention them. Does that make sense for everybody? Class, does that make sense yeah, for everybody? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay, so ask ask questions right now if, if it doesn't make sense for you. If you're like, what is she talking about? That's okay, you can tell me. Okay. If, if huh? I use a uh, no, no, uh, personal no, for example, the Correctus Catalan was constructed by 1951. It's wrong. Yeah, we're going to. When I I, 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 I I put the real name of the building. Yeah, we're going yeah, to get I into that a, a little bit more during the class, okay? And the answer to your question is yes. You can say uh, the building Puskatan was constructed by blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, but right now, like I said, we're looking at this first reason and the first reason is in simply that we don't know who did it, okay? Okay, okay. The second reason is when the action is more important than the doer. So in other words, we don't care who did it. It's really, that's not the important part. The important part is the action. We want to emphasize the action, okay? So um, we say, for example, my computer was fixed. Let's say that you have a, um, let's say that, that you have a problem with your computer. Um, let's imagine that, it, you know, your computer was, it, like you need the computer for work, okay? Especially now with the pandemic, everybody needs their computer, right? So imagine your computer is not working and you bought your computer at, you know, at a store, X store, you know, and they give you a guarantee and they say, if your, your computer doesn't work, we will fix it for you. So you take your computer to that place and you say, okay, my computer, it doesn't work. I need you to fix it. So the person is going to take the computer and they will say, okay, you can come pick it up in about, I don't know, three, four days. Okay, it will be ready in four days. When you go back in four days to that company, the computer is ready and it's working. Now, the question is, do you care who fixed the computer? Does it matter? Does it matter who did the action? Mm. Um, I think no, because um, mm -hmm. the computer and you need to get used um, in a uh, optimal condition. Exactly. What you care about is the condition of the computer. 
You don't care if it was Juan or Juana who did it. You don't care if it's Mario or, Ma or Maria who did it. You care that the computer is fixed and that it's working and now you can use it for your, for your work. That's what you care about, nothing else, okay? So that is when, this is, that's what number two is about. The action is more important than the person who does the action. Okay? Yeah, okay. Any problems so far? No. No? Carla, do you have a question? No, thanks. Okay. Okay, perfect. Let's uh, move on to the next one, number three. It says, when you want to avoid blame. In other words, you don't want to say who did the action because, if, because the action was not a good thing. Something bad happened and you don't want the person, you don't want the person to get responsibility or to get blamed for it. So you don't, you avoid saying who it was. This is actually something that like many companies use when they want to talk about a problem that happened, but they don't want to say who did the act, who did the action, right? So they say, for example, uh, well, this one, this is an example is the window was broken. Obviously breaking the window is not a good thing. So you, but you don't want to say who did the action. Maybe like it could have been yourself that you are the one who, who, who broke the, the window and you don't want no one to know about it. Maybe it was your best friend and you don't want, they tell you Shh, quiet, you know, don't say anything. Um, and so you don't say, you know, my best friend broke the window. You just say the window was broken. All right. Um, or for example, in the companies, people say mistakes were made, right? Just like in Spanish. Se cometieron errores. But, ¿quién los cometió? We don't know, right? And the reason we don't know is because they don't want to tell us. They don't want to tell us who did it because then we would have a blame. We would have a, somebody that's responsible and guilty for it. Okay, so is that clear for everybody? So far, so good? I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. Um, uh, why is a a code name to uh, negative or uh, when you try to explain, uh, for example, uh, a bad day, a bad situation, you know? When you talk about a code way, you know? Or I need to want or know. Sorry, Jonathan. The, the I'm having trouble hearing you. Could you speak a little bit louder? Uh, okay. When you talk about a uh, avoid blame, it's a uh, I don't know a bad situation or when you try to explain a. Uh, uh, for you, the passive in, in the sentence, it's, uh, for example, uh, I say it's uh, bad days or bad situation, no? Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is not a good thing. Like the action was not something good. It was something that required somebody taking responsibility, but you don't want to say who should take responsibility. So that's why, yeah, this is a bad thing, let's say, that happened, okay? So like I said, the window, the window being broken is not a good thing, right? Yeah. So you want to avoid that blame. You, you understand avoid blame? No. Okay, avoid blame. Uh, you understand the word avoid? No, no. Okay. Evitar. Evitar, exactly. Evitar. Yeah, evitar. 
And blame is like saying responsibility. Like it was your fault. You are responsible. It's your, you are guilty. Okay. 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 Right? Yeah. Okay. So is that clear? Jonathan, is that, is, does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. You're Thanks. welcome. You're welcome. Okay. And then in number four, we have when the doer is obvious. So we don't have to mention who did the action because we already know who did it. Example, Maria was arrested today. It's obvious that the person who arrested Maria was, who could have the, arrested Maria? The police. The police, exactly. Only the police can arrest somebody, right? If I say, okay, Maria, okay, Maria was arrested today, or was it, no, Maria was arrested last week and she was sentenced today to one year in prison. Who, who sentenced her? Who sentenced her? If I just, I'll, I'll repeat that sentence. If I say Maria was arrested last week, and she was sentenced today for one year in prison. Who sentenced Maria? Uh, the judge. The judge. Yeah, exactly. The judge, right? No one else can sentence Maria. It has to be a judge. Yeah. That's the only person that can sentence Maria. So, and, and I'm just using the word, I'm just using the name Maria just because, you know, generic name. But I, so if anybody here is Maria, I'm sorry. It's not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not picking on you. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I just don't, so what I'm saying is simply that uh, sometimes it's not necessary to mention who did the action for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw this yesterday, I explained this, but there are actually other reasons that we can um, use the passive voice. And that's actually something I'm gonna be explaining today that I didn't see yet, we didn't see yesterday. So this is not reason number five. When there is a generic, gen sorry, a general subject, okay? So general subject is no one, uh, no subject in specific is just, it's just generalized, okay? Example, classical music can be used to stimulate infants, okay? Now, in this case, what is our general subject? Who can, who can be stimulated? Infants. Infants. But here we're talking about, in general, Right? Does that make yes. sense? So infants in general, not talking about a specific in, infant, talking about infants in general. Okay? Talk about uh, classical music. In Sorry? General. We talk about uh, general classical music. Yeah, exactly. And classical music is also very generic. It's a general subject, right? Mm -hmm. But here we're talking about in general, the people that are simulated um, are, are infants and we're talking about infants in general. Okay, sounds good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so when, when there's a general, a general subject, uh, I'm gonna give you another example. If I say to you, um, Pupusas are eaten a lot in El Salvador. Pupusas are eaten a lot in El Salvador. 
what is the subject? The, the people no. can the eat people. in the Salvador. People. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, we're talking yeah. about the people in El Salvador, right? So that's a general subject. Like we're not talking about a specific person, right? That eats pupusa. We're talking about in El Salvador, all the people in El Salvador eat a lot of pupusas. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, that's yeah. a general subject. We're not talking about a specific person. We're talking about in general, right? So the other one we have here, uh, infants in general, right? And in the other sentence I gave you, it could be, you know, Salvadorans in general. Okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Number six, when you need to complete the meaning. In other words, in we need to say who, uh, you know, what's what, uh, what happened in order to complete the actual, uh, like, um, the meaning. Um, of the of, of the sentence. Example, the chair is made of wood. Okay, so we just have, we have to complete what, so it's made, is made what? Is made of what? Of wood, of cedar wood, specifically of cedar wood. Okay, so I can't just say the, the chair is made. If I just say the chair is made, you're like, okay, so what? That doesn't really make sense. So if I, now, if I say it's made of cedar wood, then it makes sense. It completes the meaning, right? It's like when you say in Spanish, la silla está hecho de madera de cedro, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And in that yeah. sentence, the verb uh, to be is not in past. The chair was made. No. Sir, could you repeat that again? And yeah, and the, the sentence, uh, I can say the chair was made. No, the chair is made. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. I can say the chair was made of cedar wood. Yeah, yeah. It's, no. Yes, it's possible. Yeah. Um. Although normally we would go by is made because we're talking about the present. Like, uh, I mean, unless the chair doesn't exist anymore. It, but if the chair exists, then it continues being made of cedar wood. Like you do in Spanish, right? In Spanish, you would say, la silla okay, está okay. hecha de madera de cedro. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't normally say, la, la silla fue hecha de madera de cedro. Okay. Right, unless, like I said, the maybe the chair, the chair doesn't exist anymore. For for example, think about the chairs in the Titanic; they don't exist anymore, right? So, um, okay. yeah, you know, something like that. But normally, if the chair exists, we would probably say it's made. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay. I'm just these are just examples. Okay, these are just examples, so you get the idea. But uh, with these ones, you can use it in different forms. I'm just showing you an introduction and then we will see, um, we will we will see, uh, because this is the first time that you're looking at the passive voice, we're actually just going to look at one in particular, okay? All right, so next one, number seven, when it adds important information to the sentence. In other words, we, it, we kind of need that information because yeah, it would, I mean, the, the sentence can, can, can work without it, but we need to, in order to, um, to give that important information, we need to add the, the passive voice. For example, he was bitten by an African bee. Now, we could just say he was bitten. He was bitten, yeah? But if we say by an African bee, then obviously that makes it a lot more, um, that gives important information because you probably already know that um, being bitten by an African bee is not the same as being bitten by any bee. I mean, African bees are, you know, very, 
very dangerous. <laughs> so um, you would need to, it, you know, if you went to the, to the emergency room and they say, okay, what bit him, right? Because it's not the same being bitten by a mosquito than being bitten by an African bee. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, teacher. Any questions about number seven? Remember, this is the moment yeah. for you to ask because I can still uh, help you with that. I have a question with uh, number seven. Okay. We, we can use beating with inse in insects and dogs or um, animals too. Yeah. Because it's the same picadura y mordedura. It's the same word mm -hmm. in English. Yeah, it is, it is. But um, in English, actually, um, there's another word that can be used for, um, we can also use this one. Okay, so that, that's another possibility. We can use, um, we can say he was bitten or he was stung by an African bee. So usually like bees and wasps, they sting. Okay, so. But it's better use bitten. Um, no, with this one, you can use both. It's the same. Okay. With this one, you would use both. But if it's a dog, for example, definitely don't use stung. Because stung is more about like, um, it's when like they, something like that, that would be a, more about stung, right? So, and so a dog doesn't do that, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, you couldn't use that for a dog. But for bees, you could say bitten or stung. No, that's fine. Okay, sounds good? Yeah. yeah, okay. Any questions? No, okay. No. All right. no. Let's go to number eight then. The last one is when the doer causes a surprise. Okay, so you're like, oh my goodness, you, you, can't, ima you can't believe who the doer is. <laughs> Wow, okay. So in this case, we can say, for example, this symphony was composed by Mozart when he was four years old. Wow, we would definitely not, we would not um, expect a four-year-old to be composing a symphony. So that would be something like, wow, unexpected, right? The doer causes a surprise. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. He was a baby. Okay. So basically, those are the reasons why we would, you would use a PASA, okay? So uh, those are um, reasons and some examples, okay? Now, some of the examples I use here are a little bit more complicated than what we're going to see today. Um, and just simply because I wanted to give you some reasons uh, so, or some examples. But Actually, what we're going to be looking at today is actually something very, very simple, okay? Um, so the structure of the passive is the following. First, we use a subject, okay? And what the subject is, is actually, I'm going to put here, the object of the active voice. So the subject in the passive is what was the object of the active voice. So if in a regular sentence, when we start with the subject, um, we have an object, that object will now become the subject in the passive, okay? Does that make sense? 
Does that make sense, everybody, or did I just confuse you? I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat that because I I'm, I I have, I have a feeling that you guys are a little bit lost when I say that. Okay. Is so, me, teacher? Uh, can you send the the picture the um, shot the um, WhatsApp? Sorry, could you repeat the question again, Carla? Okay. Um, can you send the picture? the reason uh the chat that was oh, yeah I, what i can do is I'll, I will share this powerpoint presentation in the group that's what i'll do okay okay so that thank you so that you jessica jessica yesterday you told us about the whatsapp group but i am not in whatsapp group oh okay um in the email that you received where you got the link for this meeting, mm -hmm. in that in, in okay. that same um, email, you will see where it says there is a link for the WhatsApp group to the join to the WhatsApp. Group. Exactly. Okay. So it will go. It will. I will review the, the email. Yeah. If you press on that on that link, it will automatically take you to the WhatsApp group, so you can join. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So anybody else that hasn't joined yet the WhatsApp group? Okay, all right. Okay, in that case, uh, well, we'll continue here. So, um, like I said, this, the subject of the passive voice is what actually was before the object in a regular sentence, okay? So in a regular sentence, we normally start with the subject, right? In the active voice, which is the sentences that we're used to, we start with the active voice. To give you an example, um, Maria uh, wrote a play. Maria wrote a play. I'm just using Maria because this is the first thing that comes to my mind. Maria wrote a play. So Maria is the doer. Right? It's the person that does the action. That's an irregular active voice sentence. But in that sentence, what is the object? So you say, Maria wrote a play. You understand a play? Yes. A play is um, un, una obra. The, the passive. Yeah, for example, like uh, Romeo and Juliet. The Romeo and Juliet. was compared to the subject in the passive voice, no? Sorry? The, the play was compared to the subject in the passive voice. Exactly, that's right, Jonathan. That's and uh, and right. the sentence, a play was... Um, was rolled by Maria. Was rolled by, yeah. Well, uh -huh. yeah, it, that's what I wanted to, to mention exactly. That's the exact idea. That in a regular sentence, if I say Maria wrote a play, then the play is the object. And what happens in the passive voice is that that object later becomes my subject. So I change the position and I convert my object to make it my subject in my passive voice, okay? After that, what I do is I use the verb to be. Now, we can use the verb to be in any form, okay? But today we're gonna to be using it in this, in this lessons, we're gonna be using it uh, in the past. So we're gonna be only using was or were, okay? All right. So there are many ways we can right. use um, the verb to be, but um, in, well, for the purpose of this, of these lessons, we're going to be just using was or were. So far, so good. Yes. No. Yeah. 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 Okay. To be in the past. Good. All right. Yeah. It's, it's just it's just going to be in the past. And after that, we're going to be using the past participle. Okay. So this is something very important. You've got to know your past participles. 
If you don't know your past participles yet, if you're having trouble with that, you're gonna have to learn them. You're gonna have to study, 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 study. Because the past participle is one of those structures in English or yeah, not structures, but um, parts of a structure that is super important. And the passive voice, for example, is impossible to do it if you don't know what the passive voice is. Sorry, the, sorry. If you don't know what the past participle is, okay? So you gotta learn that, you gotta remember that. Mm -hmm. And finally, we, we okay. can the compliment, right? If there is a compliment. Okay. But the real life is not common to speak in a passive voice. Um, yes, it is. It's, it's, more, it's, it's common, for example, when you try to, 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 to write a, a newspaper or, or some document. Um, it is common. It depends on the context. Like I said before, if we have anyone of these reasons here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight reasons. If you have any one of these reasons, you would use the, the passive voice, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's not that it's not common. It's just that you need to know when is a better moment to use it. Sometimes it will be better because it just makes more sense. Right? For example, like even in Spanish, um, what sounds more natural to say, eh, la, um, would it be more natural to say, um, what, okay, la, la, la ventana se quebró, or to say, alguien quebró la ventana. Well, what would be more natural for you? La ventana se quebró, but it's common in our culture. Sorry? Uh, no, it is normal in our culture. For example, no, who, who broke the windows. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, but imagine, imagine you were, um, I don't know, you were not home, right? Or for example, like, okay, Im imagine there is a, you know, I'm thinking a mom or a dad comes home from, from, um, from work and the children are in the house and they say, um, and, and the one of them says, hey, papá, la, 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 la ventana se quebró. O sea, they don't want to say who did it. They don't want to say, yo la yeah. quebré. Right? Yeah, because obviously the, the, the little child is not going to want the father to hit him, mm -hmm. right? Or get mad right. at him or scold him off. So instead mm -hmm. they just say, hey, la ventana se quebró. Right? So it's the same idea here, right? It really depends mm -hmm. on the context, okay? Yes, okay. what we have been most used to is using the active voice and probably the most of the time you will use that, but it really depends on the context itself, okay? Sometimes it makes more sense to write in the passive voice, okay? Well, thank you. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, okay, now, uh, going back to this, um, sometimes we will have a compliment, sometimes we won't, okay? So if it, we have a compliment, then we use it, if not, we don't. But what something that is very important is this. Uh, sometimes we know who did the action and that person that did the action is actually important 
or not important, but we want to mention it. Okay. So in that case, what we do is that we introduce the word. By. Okay. So, um, so sometimes we can, um, we can say, okay, it, you know, the window, okay, or maybe we can say, um, I'm thinking like, okay, it, the play was written by my sister, okay? So in that case, we are going to be using by plus the name or, or the, the name of the person or the thing that did the action. And in, in the, the passive voice, we call this the agent. Okay. And in case you're wondering what the agent is, in case you don't understand how or where do you get the agent from, that is the actual subject of the, oops, let me, let me change this to, it's actually the subject of the active voice. So if I say, for example, um, my, my sister wrote a play, then when I change and I say the play, sorry, the play was, okay, so the subject is the play, and then we use was, the past participle would be written, right? The past participle of write is written, and then we say by, right? And the agent would be the subject of the original sentence, so it would be my sister. So we say, by my sister. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. So far so good? Or yeah. am I confusing you? Yes. No, you can change the subject in the active voice. The object, sorry, the active voice uh, from the subject and the subject from the uh, uh, by agent, the active voice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. The agent is what before was the subject of the active voice. Okay. And I have put all of this in parentheses because sometimes we're not going to use it because we don't know the information. Like in, for example, the first the first one, when the doer is unknown, if you don't know who did the action, obviously you're not gonna say by fulanito, right? You're gonna, you can't say the building was constructed in 1951 by fulanito de tal, because we don't know who it is, right? But in other cases, we do. For example, here, we can say like this one, this last one, this symphony was composed by Mozart when he was four years old. Okay? So in this one, we would say who did it. The same, he, the, the same thing here. Uh, he was bitten or he was stung by an African bee, by an African bee, right? So do you see that? Instead of saying, and normally we would say an African bee stung or bit him. But now we're gonna say, he was bitten by an African bee. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah. Yeah? Um, if, if I change the, the sentence, I can say uh, an African bee um, bit from my brother. Sir, an African bee what? No, in the example, the uh, example say he was bitten by an African bee. Uh -huh. If I convert to active voice, uh, an African bee 
right uh, again? Yeah, you would say an African bee bit or stung bit. or stung him. Okay. Hmm? okay. Exactly. Yeah, that would be the opposite. Okay. And speaking about uh, examples, uh, we saw these examples yesterday, but you will understand them better today. Examples, Tommy broke the window. In this case, the subject is Tommy. My verb is broke. And the object is the window. So remember what I told you? That in the passive voice, the subject is the object of the active voice. So this means that this now will become my subject. So here, the window. And since I always use the verb to be, I'm going to have here the verb to be was. And the past participle of break is broken. Broken. OK? Yeah. OK. So far, so good. Does that make sense? Better sense now? Yeah? Sorry, sorry. Does this make sense? It's, is, it, is it all making sense to you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. All right, and the last sense, this last example is this one. A fallen tree damaged the house last night. So in this case, the subject is, now you're gonna tell me, what's the subject? The house. Yeah, a fallen tree. No. Yes, correct, it's a fallen tree. That's my subject, right? Yeah. Then the verb we know is the one in yellow, which is damaged. And the, what is the object? The house. The house, correct. The house would be the object, okay? So now, like I said, since this is the object, now this is gonna be my, become my subject in the passive voice. So we have here the house, right? And remember, I am, I'm, we're gonna be using the verb to be. So in this case, we're gonna be using was. Why? Because we're talking about the house. The house is singular, right? So that's why we use was. If it was like the houses, then it would be the houses were. Four. Okay? But this is just a house. Okay? Yeah. Actually, well, you know what? I'm just going to actually change that. Right. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll actually going to make that, that change so that it's better for everybody to understand it. Okay, so I'm going to change it now to the houses. So the houses were damaged because now we're talking about the houses in plural. So the, the houses were damaged by a fallen tree last night. Okay, here we have the verb to be okay. in the form of the past. And the past participle of damage is damaged. So far, so good? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Any questions? No. Okay, all right, good. Um, okay, now there's about five minutes left. Um, for this, we're actually going to be practicing, okay? So I'm going to write some sentence here. And you're gonna help me here. As a class, we're gonna do this together so we can understand it together. Okay, so we have, um, Hold on, sorry, guys. Um,
Okay, we're going to have the simple sentence. Everybody can read this? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So we have, my cousin crashed my car. Okay. So we know who did the action. In this case, we, we know that it was my cousin. If I wanted to change that, I would say, what would I start with? My, my car, car was crashed. My car was crashed. Okay. I'm actually going to change the color so that you guys can see this, um, how it's being changed. Okay, there we go. All right, so in that case, we start with? What was it? My car. My car. Good. My car, not my car. My car, and then what goes what? after my car? That's the question. Good, exactly. In this case, we're going to say was because we have to put the verb to be. Was. And then past participle of crash? Crash. Crash. And then if you want to put some compliment by my coughing. Exactly. In this case, we know who did it. So if we want to mention it, we can say by my cousin. Okay. Does yeah. that make sense for everybody? Yeah. Yes. Yes, teacher. All right, good. All right, so now that you understand that, I'm gonna do one more just to make sure you all understand what I'm talking about. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna start with this one. Hold on. Oh, sorry, my my key, my um, it's not cooperate with me. Okay, so and so those eleven year olds uh sang. Sorry, not sang, not sang, but sang those songs would be, we would change it then to those songs were sung by 11 year olds. Okay, 11 year olds. Okay. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? Okay, guys. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna send you guys uh, this by um, the WhatsApp group. So you guys can get a hold of it and practice it during your, um, uh, you know, on the platform, okay? Okay. Okay. Right, guys. Okay, so that will be all for today. I will see you guys tomorrow, okay? Take care, everybody. Okay, thanks, teacher. Bye. Thank Good night. you, teacher. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Good night. Good night.